Hey everybody, it's Anakin and Viridia with Down the Scope, episode 21, the gaming podcast you can't miss. And we have got some hot topics for you this week, but before we get started, I just want to say these people are absolutely bananas. (laughs) Here we go. Listen for your YouTube name if you are bananas. 270 KP, 95 Killbot. Alphabet, Angel of the Sickened 31, Apple Tango Rules, Arcadius X, <laughs> Stumble Barrow, Barrow Shit, <laughs> Ben Spencer Way, sorry, Bert Spencer Way, Chain Gun, Sizzy One, Cod with Swords, <laughs> Colin 332, Cubs Fan 967, The Grim Reaper, yeah. Dancing with chickens, deaconization, <laughs> D Landers one, Dudley for the win, <laughs> DX Maniac one hundred, Flip Guitar nine oh seven, Forgotten V one, General of Wallace, Greek Frenzy, Hyper Nerd nine thousand, I am the Music Man two hundred. I Dawson 007. I Dawson. Jeremy Ron 69. <laughs> Josh Matt MHS. Kentrionis. Lord Kane. Mega Danon. MPRC 1136. What's up, Paul? What's up, Paul? <laughs> Mr. Icy 45. Mutu for Life. Nameless Red Wolf. Nerd. <laughs> One three three seven seven or Leet, Never Good X, Night Stalker three, NGT tutorials, Pokemon nine seven seven, Quintar the Monk, <laughs> Quintar. what? Radar Raider Gaming Nation, Radiation Cat, Ru- <laughs> Rubik's Cube Dude, Second One One Thousand, Soften Sable. Super Crazy 99 CK. Super. Team Aspect. The Confused Man 87. (laughs) Maybe that's his age. I don't know. (laughs) The Darren 16. The Jam Central 1. The Sky is Fouling. (laughs) The Unfaded One. The V Gamer. Vitalim 4. Wham 69. Echo. <laughs> way up 69, way up 69. Who cares 295? V NECA and Spark Oz. <laughs> hard scalpers. <laughs> Those are the hard scopers, the guys that have listened to all 20 episodes of Down the Scope. And you know what? Last week, if you didn't listen to it, we said we'd do it. And if you guys posted in the comments that you've listened to every single episode, there you go. We follow through. I'm a man of my word, right, Viridia? Of your word. That was all like 50 of them. Jeez. That took up a lot of time. That took Indeed. up literally four minutes. Good Lord. <laughs> if you heard your name there, there's your shout out on YouTube. You're now famous. <laughs> there you go. You were going to get subs up the butt. Indeed. All their channels right now are just being flooded. <laughs> They're flooded with, with with tons of traffic. You guys are going to be making money very soon. We'll be sending, no, we won't send you checks. YouTube will send you checks. Indeed. We're going to ask you guys to partner us. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop them because I was like, wait, if I say I'm going to send them a check, I will get a, I will get a mail. So, hey, listen, man, it's been two weeks. I oh, bought a hot God. dog. I'm ready, dude. Where's the check? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Good Lord. <laughs> All right. Well, what the what the heck is happening? It's episode twenty one, man. We got a lot to talk about. What's uh, what's going on with you, Viridia? Oh, not a lot actually. I, I I've been very inactive, but that's uh, had a lot going on. So I'm gonna be getting back into that boat. I'm gonna get, getting stuff put out. I've actually done something I haven't done in a long time, and that's go go a whole day without uploading something. It's just Gasp. not something. I know, right? <laughs> I don't normally do that, but uh, I have the past couple of days and. Uh, it's just been really slow, guys. Don't worry about it. You know, stuff happens. We've got a lot happening. As a matter of fact, between Anakin and I, um, you know, a lot going on for us. So we are we're we're pretty busy. You know, Anakin, I know you're busy as crap. Oh my god, I can't tell you about anything in gaming this week, but I can sure tell you how to how to pack a box. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so like I think I think we might be literally at the last episode in which you talk about moving. Yes. Oh my God. You know, I'm just I'll bring you up to speed on everything. It's just terrible. You know, I I know a lot of my uh, a lot of my guys over on my channel, all my friends on my channel have been just waiting patiently. Thank you so much for that because you know it, it's like just since I've started down the scope, I have had basically <laughs> two. <laughs> Uh, uh, major life events. You know, one was, was uh, you know, I, I I just had kids for the first time, you know, and, and I say plural because for those of you that don't know, you know, me and my wife uh, had twins uh, in late, uh, in, in early January. And yep. uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's huge. You know, it, I mean, it's like, I, we never had kids before, you know, we didn't really think about it. We were both kind of set in our way. So that was huge. And obviously we've made a, a major, you know, change in our lifestyle and everything. Right. And then the second biggest thing you can do pretty much in your life besides have kids is, is move to a new house, <laughs> which is also <laughs> what I've done. And, um, I was supposed to be in a new house last week, which is what was, we were supposed to do episode 20 at my new house and some paperwork got screwed up and you know on their end not on my end everything was great on my end i tried to do anything and everything to make sure i was in the new house everything turned into a disaster and um i had to be out of our current house because we sold our current house i had to be out of that house in 12 hours <laughs> and we Jeez. we had to be out of there. We packed up everything and and moved into an apartment. I got utilities turned on. I even got internet turned on to be able to do the podcast last weekend <laughs> at the apartment. And I went through hell and back trying to get everything ready. We've got two dogs, three cats, two kids, and me and my wife. And we shoved everything into a 700 square foot apartment for Jeez. the last week. And in the last two days, we got moved into the new house. I am surrounded right now with boxes and wires and cables the only thing i have set up for the podcast is my main pc and my headset so that is where that is what's going on with me right now but let me tell you as soon as i get settled be on the lookout for some finally some content coming from anakin besides down the scope yeah i can't wait to see that i mean you you i mean you've been putting stuff out but the, it's been limited and that's why i mean right it's got it's a lot a lot going on at one time no i, I totally agree with, I, I totally understand i Oh, it's just been it's been one of those weeks actually. Yeah, it's it's just been crazy. And I mean, of course you're about to you're about to have your life change here very yeah, very soon. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to be in that same boat. So, you know, once once my content slows down, let's hope they have the same uh the same patience. Indeed. Oh <laughs> let's yeah. Hope I, let's hope I've gotten all my crap done. You know what I'm planning on doing actually is getting I want to get everything I've got going. I've got Infamous, I've got some LPs I haven't even touched in a while that I need to finish up and get all get those all complete by the time it gets here. And and you know, possibly have, uh, hopefully have some some little videos or something of them to to put on here and, and kind of fill you in. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, I will be putting content of him out because I'm going to be filming it nonstop. <laughs> and I'm sure I, I, I am 100 percent sure this little guy is going to do something that amuses the crap out of me, <laughs> <laughs> or something that I can I can put into Vegas and make funny. Oh for the, yeah, for everybody. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hopefully be having a lot of that going on. But you know, again, yeah, life life happens. It's not just one of those things where you just you know you just turn it on every single day, turn it off. You know, you've, right. you've got to, got to take a break every now and then. And, and mine's coming up pretty quick. And that's right. It's going to so, be, it's going to be crazy, especially the first, uh, the first couple of months, man, it's rough. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I know it is. I, I've, I've been literally warned by every, it's like, a, it's like this thing where they're already sitting in this comfort zone. They're like, yeah, I'm out of it. But uh, yeah, it's hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I swear to you, nobody told me ahead of time. Everybody was just yeah. like, Oh, it's so great. Can are the best thing ever. Nobody ever mentions the first two months. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, we don't talk about that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, you know, I, I've, I've been doing exercises. I've been, like, as I'm gaming, I, I, I've actually downloaded an MP3 <laughs> of, of a baby crying. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not even lying. And I, I have it running while I play Infamous. So I'm playing through on good. <laughs> And I'm just sitting here, and I I can I can only handle handle it for a bit, you know. I'm like turning it off, and and you know I found myself doing something. I turn it off during the cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, like, you just I was like, to do that in real life. <laughs> it's like, right, Brady, shut them up. <laughs> cutscene. Yep. <laughs> Take them out. So no. So I I got to keep it going through the cutscenes. I just gotta I gotta turn up the volume, or you know I gotta do something. So. Yep. 
Because you, you know, know the problem is you can't go back and watch it. That's what happens with most exactly. games. Exactly. Well, that that's where my hop hog is going to come in handy. It's gonna, well, it's like, <laughs> when a scene happens, I'm going to run in, take care of the baby. It's like, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Put him down, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to go back to the hop hog and be like, all right, let's rewatch that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no why, right? Oh, my God. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I've been thinking about it, too. I... I, and I, know, I don't mean to get off on this tangent, but I'm going to have to change my whole gaming perspective once he's old enough to understand words. Yep. I mean, I sit here, and, and the other night I'm sitting here playing, and I'm like, God dang it! Yeah, I just start getting upset, you know, and pissed off, and I'm like, you know, that's going to upset that little kid. You know, <laughs> he may he may not like that I'm yelling when he's trying to sleep. You know, yeah, so, no kidding. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've got I've really got a lot of thinking to do. <laughs> so guys, seriously, when I when this change happens, which is going to be insane, you know, bear with me in in the beginning. I have to find a. I'm going to have to definitely work a schedule for for me to be able because you see, Anakin, you got a you got you got a nice distance between you and and, and your kids. I, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, especially being in a now. house. Yeah, right, especially be, now. being in a house. I I am not I am not um, <clears throat> not 20 feet from them and oh, uh, wow. these walls yeah exactly and there there's not really a place where I can get away um, other than you know uh, having having Brittany maybe take you know, take him for a walk for about 30 minutes or something you know take him out and get some air or something right. so yeah it's gonna be, it's gonna definitely be hard I'm not not trying to get off on a baby tangent but you know we <laughs> we, we, we we brought up change and that's something that I think is gonna it, it's one of those things you just got to be patient with and and do be patient with both of us while we transition it's just one of those times and once it's once it's uh it's settled we got a lot of stuff coming in the future uh, it's going to be interesting uh, for the podcast and beyond that so Definitely keep on the lookout. Um, we've got. Um, well, here, here's the good news. Whenever, whenever you have to take that hiatus, <laughs> I'll be coming out of all this, and then they exactly. can come over to my channel, and I'll have new content while there they're waiting you go. for you. <laughs> there you go, and you guys just pile over to Anakin again. If you haven't subscribed to Anakin and you're on my channel, that's a bad idea. We're gonna be. <laughs> it's like it's like it, I'm gonna. I reference stuff. For, if he does something and I reference it, I mean, we're always doing something. As a matter of fact, you know, we've been called out actually in the mail for not finishing the portal two yet. I know. Now, this... now, now that you're in your house, man. No that's excuses. One of the, that's one of those things we gotta we gotta finish that up. Yep, no excuses. I'm no excuses. I'm ready to go. We'll, we're gonna All get right. that back out there. And, and now I feel good about it because now we're at a point to where Portal Two is not being overplayed. Exactly. So so you're not gonna be spanned with Portal. Now it's gonna pop up. It's gonna say you know Anakin Verdia Portal, and you're oh yeah, you know I've been waiting for this. And not only that, <laughs> I haven't played Portal in like a month. Me neither. So, <laughs> so it's going to be just frustration. I mean, especially since we're on. I think we're on light bridges or. or yep. It was light bridges, yeah. Yeah. So we're we're already a good chunk of the way in. So that means the the puzzles aren't easy <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> we're already out of practice. So yeah, exactly. that'll be interesting. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so what do we got? I mean, we, we had a few games come out. Uh, I think since um, the last podcast was mainly about E three, of course. Yeah, yeah, all E three. But you know, there was a couple of uh, mediocre titles. Yeah. You know, I mean, nothing, no triple A titles, but there was a couple. And you know, obviously, one of them has gotten. A ton of press, although for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? Duke Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. You're right. So, so basically, uh, I, I I know I have been spanned with it. I'm sure you have too. People oh, yeah. asking you if you're gonna if you're gonna buy this, you're gonna play it. Yep. And the thing is, is that uh, hell no, I'm not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I made a statement, um, you know, I don't. it might have been in the podcast, might have been in a stream, there's no telling, I talk a lot of places, but I, I, made a, I made a comment that this is just one of those games that even by looking at the trailer, it's like the trailer couldn't even impress me. And I was like, ugh, you know, this is a game that's been in development for 13 years, and a lot of people made this, this absolute, they made this assumption that it because it hasn't been out and been quote unquote in development for 13 years <laughs> that it is going to be 13 years worth of content. Yeah. Geez. The truth is this game was never in development for 13 years. It was it was on a piece of paper saying yes it is in development. The thing is is that it was developed, trashed, developed, trashed. It was developed all the way up probably until a year ago or two mm -hmm. and then trashed again and then they started over with this and you know, I think that they kept they, they what they probably did is they kept a lot of stuff from the the old days yep. that they trashed, but then they added this new element in. 
Okay. Well, I, I know they changed gaming engines at least three times. Yeah, exactly. It's it's all about it's all about trashing and and, and working. On, and I don't know where a game developer goes with goes with this. I don't know where they're like, okay, we need it. We need to trash this and try it again with a different engine. What what were they trying to accomplish? Was was the what, could I, I I I'm imagining that they couldn't get the peace stream to go into the toilet. They're like, we got to do it again. <laughs> well, you know, it's like the, right. the boobs just don't, they don't look, they don't, they don't look right. We're going to do it again. Or yep. we can't mark on the whiteboard. We got to do it again. I don't know what they're going for because none of it worked a hundred percent. Right. You know, it wasn't very fleshed out. And I, I, I granted, I haven't actually played it myself. I've seen enough of the gameplay because I was really interested in it. Honestly, that I've watched streams. I've watched video. I've talked to people. Um, you know, none of this comes from commercial review. This is all from actual people who've bought and purchased the game and they're just like, God, this is horrible. Yeah. I actually got to talking with a guy in the stream and he was telling me, you know, the multiplayer, honestly, it's it's a fun it's actually kind of fun. However, the story, the single player, it's just like they tried to do too much old and it didn't live up. It's basically like a, a relic that's not worth having. Right. Um so yeah, when it comes to Duke Nukem guys, I probably won't be doing that at all. Um just because I am tired absolutely tired of spending money on new games that are just not worth it and you know i've done it i've done it a lot you know in the past we let's see we we had brink um others you know i'm I'm not gonna bring them up right now but but uh i i I feel like i feel like cheated when i do that so yeah maybe when it drops down to you know 20 15 dollars or something like that around that range i'll definitely pick it up give it a shot show you guys what it's like because i feel that i feel that playing those bad games doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a bad result because i think a lot of people like to see these crap games played <laughs> you know what i mean especially yeah. especially when there's glitches and and a lot of rage inducing <clears throat> material but right. but uh, yeah it's not worth 60 dollars yeah, a- absolutely not. You know, I, I still feel like th- it's it's bizarre to me that these developers, you know, know that a game like this is flawed right out of the gate, and they yeah. know it's somewhat of a novelty. It's somewhat dated. Why bother sticking a sixty dollar price tag on it? And mm-hmm. you know, they know they're not going to sell it for that. You know, the the sales were very very limited on this game. You know, it's mostly there for nostalgia's sake. Get more sales. Drop it right out, right as a release game. Put it out there for thirty nine ninety nine, and I guarantee you, you'd probably get more profit and more money from it than if you have it out there. You know, if you get a hundred thousand people to buy it, you know, for forty dollars, you may get twenty thousand that buys it for sixty. You know, and right. that's the difference. You know, I mean, I I probably wouldn't went and bought it for forty bucks or something, maybe maybe thirty. You know, but sixty or even yeah, or even as a DLC or, or a downloadable game. You know, I mean, absolutely. That- I mean, that would have been a good idea, but no, they, they, they felt that they felt it was it was worthy, and I, I just don't feel the same way. I, I, uh, you know, the Duke, the Duke games were good for back in the day. It's kind of like you got to look at a game like uh, like Goldeneye, and you 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 relive that experience. Imagine, and if you, maybe you haven't played it in that long, but you're like, oh my god, I remember Goldeneye is such a good game. It is a good game, and then you're like, all right, I'm gonna put it in. You put it in, and you're playing it, and you're like. Oh God! You know, it's like this is this kind of this is kind of stale. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, it was good. Then you then then you had the plus sign. The the nice memories you had with uh-huh. the game <laughs> equals nostalgia equals good time. Okay. Now look at what they did. They're like we're re-releasing Goldeneye, and I'm like, oh God. Yeah. What they what did they do? They actually revamped it. It's not the same game with nice graphics. They made a new game. And they made it with today in mind. And you know what they did? They made ju- just as equal a, a, a good experience. They, they made the same experience again, not just the game. So that's what you got to do. What Duke seems to have done is gone, okay, it worked back then. Let's put it now. Let's put some new stuff in it, some, uh, a, few, a few little tweaks in it, and, and we're good to go. Um, I know a lot of you guys are actually playing it. You guys have talked about it and asked me if I'm going to play it. And, uh, you know, this is, I just wanted to bring this out and give you my answer and why I'm not going to play it. Um, if you, if you have a different opinion and, and you're playing it and you really do enjoy it, please comment. Tell me why I'm stupid. Tell me, tell me why I'm an idiot. Go ahead. I, I, I will take it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I'm an idiot for this one. I, I think most will agree that this wasn't the smart, uh, this wasn't the, the right game, uh, for my purchase anyway. 
Yep. So, so there you uh, go. There's the there's Duke Nukem forever. You know. I, I mean, again, you know, for me, I'm I'm passing on it. Uh, I can't agree with uh, Viridia Moore. I mean, I, I just think that uh, it's just dated. You know, if it's a if it's a, a what do they call it? A, one of the um, uh, cheap titles, uh, budget a titles. Budget. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at some point, I, I may jump on board if I see it on a deal, but. Sixty dollars, man! No way, you know. No, I'm not. There's no way you could get me to do that. I, I no. I, I've done it before. You know, I've been like excited for something like that, and it just comes out. I mean, I was excited for Brink, and then it was a flop. <laughs> oh God, that was a huge flop. Yeah, it, it was. It was pretty bad. And so, I mean, I mean, the, it's those things that that really bite you, and uh, and make you cautious about about your purchases. Now there, there was another game released, uh, this week or last week rather. Um, but we talked about E3 again, and that was, uh, Alice madness returns. And this is the That's sequel right. to America McGee's Alice, which was a fantastic, uh, computer. It was a PC game. Fantastic. Um, highly underrated game. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those games I, I actually heard about from a, you know, it was literally like, I don't even know. It, it was like on a, on a, on the, the wind. It just kind of flew into my ear. It's like America McGee's and I'm like, what was that? Where do you buy this? <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I don't know where to buy it. And this kind of gets into my our next topic, but I couldn't find a copy because at the time I didn't have the internet. So um, I actually downloaded it um, and uh, I played it and I absolutely enjoyed it. It's a, it's a basically it's a, a reimagining of the Alice story. Uh, the, uh, I, I believe it's uh, after the original story, if I'm not mistaken. It's, yeah, it's, a, he, it's basically a sequel to, to Through the Looking Glass, or right. as you know, most audiences know it, Alice in Wonderland. And uh, <laughs> the idea is that you know, Wonderland has turned into this macabre environment where everything is kind of eerie and spooky or whatever. And you know, and Alice even herself has kind of taken on almost this. Uh, uh, almost like a serial killer level persona now, you know, yep. she literally is out there just slicing and dicing people and killing them. And, you know, but most of the time, because of their, all the imaginary characters from the Wonderland world, you know, I mean, it, you, you don't really feel that, that she's yeah. that, you know, you don't feel that she's evil because she's slicing cards in half, you know, card people or whatever like that. So, you know, I thought it was a fantastic game and, yep. uh, you know, I always wanted to know if they were going to expand that universe. Hell, I'd, I'd like to see a movie based on that same universe, which yeah, they're talking yeah. about doing something like that. <laughs> I wish they would. I wish they. I mean, this Tim Burton movie that came out, it was that yeah. was that was low class. Okay, yeah, yeah, I it, mean, was, it was just okay. I mean, I didn't. I saw it. I was like, eh. You know, it could have been a lot better. Yeah, Johnny Depp dancing and, and that that was just like you know I don't know I I, I felt like I felt like this could have been way better. I felt like there could have been a part in that movie that just grabbed a hold of me. This game did that. Honestly, the, the first one, uh, you know, it really grabbed the hold of me. The the thing about it is, it's a it's it's a platformer slash kind of like a shooter slash you know just a fighter. You know, it's yeah. it's got it's got it's kind of feels like honestly it feels a lot like Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> you got all these weapons Actually, yeah. and stuff to use, and and you're platforming, you're doing all this fun stuff, you're gaining powers as you go. The real eye, the the real the real catching detail of this game is the the uh, environment. It, it's always changing, it's always evolving. Uh, my fa- one of my favorite parts. Of the game was the the chess part, and you literally had to move on the floor like a chessboard. It's these little innovate, innovative things that made this really good for me, and and they just released um, the sequel to that, which is Alice uh, Madness Returns, and that's for the PS3 and Xbox. I believe it's for both. Yeah. And um, the thing is, is that I actually didn't get to play this one either yet. Um, again, we you know Anakin and I have been really busy. We haven't gotten to pick these up. Uh, they're on the list. However, I can tell you what I've heard and what others have said. And unfortunately, Anakin, it seems like this has gotten pretty mediocre reviews. Yeah, I think overall, you know, the I think you said earlier we were talking about it, and and it was getting around sevens, generally speaking. You know, if you kind of equate all the reviewers out there, I know everybody's got a different scale, but if you just said pretty much everybody is a one to ten scale, generally it looks like everybody's kind of giving it around that six or seven ish area. Yeah, which which means it's it's not bad. It's pretty much just, it's just an okay game now. I, I've I've actually kind of walked around now. I I don't know if did you ever see did you see the IGN review? I didn't see the IGN review. Okay, so here's the thing about IGN that I don't understand, and 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 it was so weird. I'm sitting here looking at this game. It looked so good. It looked it honestly to me looked like the original Alice, 
but with these beautiful graphics and they're sitting there just, you know, complimenting them. And then, you know, he makes a comment like there's, there's around every single turn, there's an invisible wall. And, uh, you know, there'd be like, there would be like a set piece, like maybe a branch looping under the ground with some, with some, uh, you know, some leaves and stuff on it, some greenery. And there'd be like a little hole or something that kind of looked like you could pass through it and he'd try and pass through it and he couldn't. And, it's just one of these things where it's like, okay, he had a minor gripe about the game, but then he, he gives his, his, his score and it's like a six <laughs> and, and it's like, good, 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 bad, negative, uh, you know, invisible walls. And I'm like, really that cut down a whole freaking like four points off the review. I mean, yeah, he, he named a few other things, but, but really that was what did it for you. And I mean, I was like, wow, you know, I haven't played this game yet and maybe it is mediocre, but I, I just don't see it. Like in the set pieces and stuff like that, I'm still pretty pumped to play it. You know, these reviewers, you know, at some point I was thinking of, of uh, devoting part of our podcast to just reviewing games and, and things that we get to play, which we do kind of already, but really making it a little more formal. Because, you know, the thing is, I have the same gripe about some of these reviewers. Uh, it's like, you know, they review certain, you know, they, they don't review the game. They don't review the experience. They, right. they go in and they nitpick. Uh, you know, they. I've got a good friend of mine that will, you know, you could put in front of him literally the best game of all time and just say, oh, my God, here it is. This is, you know, critically acclaimed, user acclaimed. <laughs> Everybody agrees. This is the best game ever made. Here you go. Check it out. He, yep. he would like start playing it and go, yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, look at that. There's some tearing on this edge and this texture when you move forward <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I'd have to give it about a seven. And, you know, you're just like, what? You know, what the hell are you talking about? And, you know, they, there's, I swear these reviewers, get, get, they get stuck on certain things that bother them. Yeah. And what they really need to focus on, they need to just focus on the game experience. Did the game deliver what you felt that it should? Yeah. You know, if you play the game, do you get transported to that universe? Do you get uh, tied to the character that you're playing? Do you uh, feel some kind of relationship with the other characters interacting with you in the game? Right. Uh, you know, is the environment believable? Is the physics, you know, uh, are the physics correct and accurate? You know, all these things, you know, is the art style interesting? Don't, you know, okay, if there's a little glitch somewhere, forget about it. Obviously, yeah. if the game is buggy or if there's a lot of glitches, you know, then, yeah. you yeah. know, obviously, you know, mark the game down for that. But, I mean, if you if you come across one little glitch or a bug or, or even a game mechanic, like, you know, having to block off certain areas, we all understand adventure-style games, platformers, and so forth. They have to make it linear. You know, they can just put up a damn wall that says you can't walk through here, or they can take an artistic approach to it. Right. Don't mark off the game, you know, because the yeah. developer tried to class up a, a, a linear progression for a character by doing something artsy instead of just putting up a damn wall. I mean, you know, give them, a, give them somewhat of a break here. If the game delivers, give it the right. credibility it deserves. Right, and this this all this goes along with actually a game that we didn't get to talk about either that came out, which was Infamous Two. Oh, I uh, know, God, everybody's been talking about that one. Yeah, Infamous Two is. I can tell you right now, I am absolutely loving the game. the The thing about it is that it offers a ton of content to play through. It's got you've got a good uh, story progression. You can replay it as bad sco story progression. These actually change at one point the whole way the rest of the game is played. So you're literally not just encouraged, you want to play it twice. And the thing is, is that this game is riddled with a lot, a lot of, of glitches. A lot of very iffy things about it. And these are things, this is just what you're talking about, though. These are things that would normally, if it, they were in a game, it would count, count the game down tremendously. However, the overall experience, I'm willing to deal with some some glitches and stuff because I realize the massive size of the world. I realize the way that Cole moves is not normal. It's not like a normal game. You're not always in every game you're not flying around and 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 jumping and and just grind railing all over the place. So it's these little things. It's like, okay, yeah, I I got glitched out quite a few times. I've had a lot of weird things happen, but I'm going to let it pass because I got a, a good experience out of it. Yeah, if, but, if it yeah. doesn't ruin the experience, then let it slide. You know, I mean, obviously, like you say, if you had, if you had a lot, if you had a, a pretty large number of glitches that actually affected your enjoyment of the game, 
absolutely list them out, talk about them in a review, and and discuss them. You know, and and obviously let it you know let it be reflected in your review of the game. But otherwise, if, if you see a glitch here and there, and it literally did not affect your enjoyment of the game, or it didn't didn't you know uh, break the game, you know, let's say, then mm-hmm. you know what? Take chalk it up as part of. Uh, quality control in gaming these days. I mean, we see it in every game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, it's just one. It's just one of those things. And by the way, Infamous Two is a definite buy. Um, if you have, I mean, you really have no reason not to go buy this game because if you have a PlayStation Three, um, you know, you've got the first Infamous for free. You don't have to pay for it. True. Um, and I mean, this is a perfect sequel. This it, it did really well. The only complaint I have. Is why the hell did they change Cole? Like, they 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 made him a different person. I don't, I, you know, I hate it when movies do that. <laughs> yeah. That that is that may be a nitpick, but but you can go to hell for that one. I I really do feel. Like yeah, I, well, I'm with you on that. I mean, you okay. know, I I have no idea why they chose to do that. And then I mean, they literally got so much hate for it that they actually shaved his head, because the, you know, in the original the original concept was that he he didn't he had a full head of hair. He he looked completely different. So they're like, oh, well, we'll change his hair up. He still he still doesn't sound the same. He still doesn't look the same. That just really upset me. I hate when movies do that. Like like Batman. When, when Batman, we have Batman. Uh, and what was it? Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. And they changed. What was her name? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. They changed the uh, the girl. Uh, yeah, the, Anna. No, uh, I can't remember. But yeah. they changed her from. Uh, from uh, Katie the, Holmes, Katie Holmes to the other lady, to, which you know, yeah, goofy chick, <laughs> goofy chick, yeah, exactly. There you go. Then no, no other name, but you know, it's it. At least, I mean, I don't know. They they at least kind of looked the same, but it was just like when I when I saw the Dark Knight, I was like, who is this? I didn't realize it was the same girl. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I mean, here's the thing. I didn't take the time to remember her name really. You know, after after Ma- the, Maggie the movie, Gyllenhaal, Maggie, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. After the after I watched the movie, I was like, okay, you know, we're. we're, we're it, it, it was it was good, but I'm not. I'm you know I know Bruce Wayne's Bruce Wayne. I'm not an idiot, but I'm not going to remember her name because right. I'm not a huge fan of the of the the Batman series, which I am. I am more now that I played Arkham Asylum, and um, and you know so when when they change something like that, it just really upsets me. So when they do it in a game, there's no excuse. Change the voice actor. Why the hell did you change the way he looked? Okay, <laughs> that's so stupid. Anyway, the game is definitely worth buying. I'm still playing through it. Um, I've heard the endings are quite good. Uh, Re will attest to that if you need if you need any help with that. Rad Austin's beat it uh, I think twice now. So yeah, go and check go and check. <laughs> yeah, no no kidding. He's Reed, it. get a life. <laughs> <laughs> he was done. He was done recording his LP before I started. You know man. what? He, he was... must have been confused. I bet you he thinks Cole is a zombie. <laughs> He did. He was like, "Dang it! They promised a zombie mode." And I was like, "No, they didn't." <laughs> Just because oh, every game, yeah. That, that that's another thing to, to touch on real quick. If you guys haven't gone, if you need some information on the new uh, Shingra La zombie map. Uh, Reed has a pretty good. I mean, well, it's not just pretty good. It's actually, I guess, phenomenal for a zombie fan. Uh, because he actually goes in and he really, really does uh, break apart the thing, um, and uh, and really give you some 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 good tips and stuff on it. What you, have you seen the, the the screenshots for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks pretty interesting. It I'm, looks pretty interesting. I, I I I'm just I'm done, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to say the same thing, man. I mean, honestly, I I just you know it may disappoint some people. Uh, I mean, I don't know. My my fans may push me enough to where you know I I may have to get it just to make everybody happy. But I'll tell you what. Honestly, gang, uh, if you're still playing Black Ops as as your choice of games right now, really, really think about branching out because there are a lot of other games yeah. that have come out this year that truly do deserve your attention. It's yeah. nothing against the COD franchise. Let me tell you, I'm one of the biggest fans, regardless of all the hate out there. I love the whole COD franchise. I've been playing it since the very first one, and I don't mean Modern Warfare. I mean Call of Duty. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. Um, I've played them all. I love the game. I love the series. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and, and uh, you know go, oh, gosh, yeah, Call of Duty. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to join the haters and go, yeah, screw it. No, the point is here is that <laughs> Black Ops is fine, but it's it's done, okay? The, the game has outlived its, its life right now overall. I know a lot of people are out there playing it, but if you do, if you even just kind of look around YouTube a little bit, good luck finding current uh, hardcore Black Op game players out there. Everybody has either transitioned back to a different COD, meaning either four MW2, hell, even some World at War I've seen started popping up again. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you know, Black Ops for the most part. I mean, you know, there there may be another surge here again when the when the map packs come out. But um, I'll tell you, I, I'm I'm kind of with you on this one, man. Uh, I'm ready for uh, I'm ready for Battlefield Three. I'm ready for Modern Warfare Three. Uh, and and anybody who's spending their time with Black Ops right now, either a you don't have the money to go out and buy new games, which hey, my hat's off to you there. I'm I'm with you, and that'll that'll actually transition us to our next topic here. But the other the other point is is that if you do have any spare cash that you've got budgeted for gaming, you owe it to yourself to try out so many other games on the market right now. Right now, Alice is a good one, mm-hmm. even if you didn't play the first one. Infamous 2, L.A. Noir, Portal 2. I mean, how many, you know, I mean, sure, you could give Duke Nukem a, a shot. You know, how yep. many, a Crisis 2 was a huge hit. I'm still a big fan of that. I'm going to probably yep. play some more of that soon. You know, so, I mean, there's plenty of games from 2011 already. Dead Space 2, which was you and you, yours and mine, yeah. uh, our, our game of the quarter. You know, we're That's actually gonna, we're coming up on our, our second quarter game, uh, probably in the next podcast or two, I think. Yep. We'll have to look we at sure our are. calendar. We sure are, and I've got my pick. Awesome. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing is everybody should really think about it. I know that, uh, like I said, there's going to be a little surge for the for the new Black Ops map pack. You know, everybody's going to jump back into it for a little bit just because it's fresh and new. But even that last map pack, as much as I even like the maps, okay, I and I really did. I, I liked them. But as much as I did like them... It's going to be one of those things where you know I they just didn't they didn't grow on me that long. I really liked Hotel. I liked Convoy a lot, but they just didn't draw me back to, enough to the game because of the damn lag problems and some of the other yeah. network code issues. And so I, I just I'm just not playing it much anymore. It's the hit detection, man. I, I tell you what, I, I I tried actually sniping the other day. Just pfft, there's no point, man. Just headshot after headshot, nothing would hit. I I'm absolutely just, you know that's 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 just garbage. But but yeah, I mean seriously, like like you said, definitely definitely branch out if you haven't, if you're just playing Call of Duty. I'm done with COD. I'm not gonna be buying. If somebody wants to buy it for me, <laughs> you're more than welcome. But I will not be purchasing the new COD uh map pack because it would be a waste of money for me. You know, when yeah. when Modern Warfare three came out with a map pack, boy they made me want it. You know how? One, the the maps looked really good to me, honestly. And I like the game a lot more than I do with Black Ops, but also they added these nice classic maps, and I'm like, oh, this will bring me back to, to Modern Warfare. You know, yeah, the first four, yeah. That was a, that was a definite good thing because without those, this game, you know, those map packs wouldn't have sold me. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm definitely not going to get it. But anyway, what is our what what are, we, what are we talking about today for 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 our main topic? What 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 has everybody been sending us mail asking us about? Oh boy, you know, and this was the thing, you know, we got a, a ton of responses on this, and we we really uh, unfortunately won't be able to go through every single uh, uh, email that we got regarding this topic. But like I was saying, for those of you who can't go buy new games right now. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, budgetary constraints or whatever, let's talk about piracy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's a hot topic. I know yeah, everybody's going to have an opinion. It, it, it is a very, a, a very, uh, it's, you know, it's almost scary to give my opinion. Um, it, it, I don't know. I, I, it's just like, God, it's so cut close with who, how many people feel good? How many people feel bad? And, you know the way I feel about it. Um, actually, you know what? Do you mind going first on this one? Well, I want to hear what you have to say. Well, let's tell the audience first, okay? You know, uh, uh, Brad and I know each other pretty darn well, but believe it or not, this is a topic we have not discussed. Yeah. We are going to talk about this live. We have no pre-discussion about this, and I think you you might actually be a little surprised at my opinion on it. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's the thing. Here's my take on it. Uh, you know, just obviously we're, we'll elaborate, but let me just give you my take on it in a nutshell, okay? Here's the deal. Piracy to me is a, a very specific case when it, when it comes to whether it's right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Here's the bottom line for me, okay? I have had more than my fair share of, uh, of times when I have pirated uh, a game. Now, let me, let me clarify this, okay? Now, uh, there are times in my life when 
Uh, I was not doing very well financially. I have always been a gamer since I, I was extremely young. I mean, my, my parents got me an Atari whenever I was, you know, Jesus, four years old, I guess. You know, so, I mean, we've, I've been a, a, literally a quote-unquote console gamer, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I transitioned to PC later, and I, I did, you know, I got a Dreamcast, all these things, okay? But here's the thing. PC has been, primarily been my big platform. And there were there were plenty of times in my teens, uh, my my especially my early to mid twenties, I was not doing very well financially, but I still had that that gaming habit. Mm-hmm. And um, you know there was a, there'd be a new game I'd really want to try it, I'd really want to check it out, and I just could not put out the cash. And so if a friend of mine had it and they said, hey, let me, let me get you a copy of these floppy disks, I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, when, when the first CD burners came out, I, I was living with a roommate at the time. He bought one of the very first CD burners. Uh, it cost literally like $600 at the time Ooh, for a man. one speed. It took over an hour to copy a CD at the time. And you know what? I would I would face the consequences of just going. Okay, I'll you know I'm going to go ahead and and burn a CD because I can't afford it. You know, and even then, back then, you know, the CDs, the blank CDs, were like ridiculously high priced, yeah. but they still weren't as much as a game. So I have I have done my my fair share of piracy. I've found you know in the old days I I've, I've gone on FTP sites. I've been on torrent sites. I've been on DC sites, direct download sites. I have done things you know I've pirated you know programs and other things. I have done this. Okay, I, I I'm not giving a justification here, uh, you know about oh well, I can't afford it because you know well the bottom line is let me tell you a, an interesting thing. I uh, speaking of piracy in general, not just games. Okay, I pirated uh, early copies of 3D Studio Max. Now this is a this is an exceptionally expensive 3D animation program. Okay, and I I pirated that program as far back as DOS, the DOS version back in like 19. Uh, 95, I had a version, 94 actually, and I was running it on DOS, and this was given to me uh, by a friend of mine at the time, and, you know, I was like, well, this doesn't hurt anybody, I'm never going to buy this, ever. Exactly. <laughs> this is like three or $4,000 at the time. In fact, back then, I think it was even more. But do you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the rationale that I can use at my age and obviously, game, you know, game developers, application developers, they don't want to hear this, okay? But the bottom line is, is guess what I do for a living now? Yep. I work in 3D Studio because I learned on a pirated version, and I pirated <laughs> several versions beyond that. I learned how to use that damn software. And do you know now my company owns a copy of 3DS Max 9 uh, or 2009, 2010 and 2011, my 2011 copy just came in a few weeks ago. The company bought the full version for me, and I own my own version of 3D Studio Max 9 on a personal level that I paid out of my pocket with my own money. They have oh, wow. sold two. Uh, or actually, if you count the one that I work for, you know, my company now, they've, they've bought three, you know, one full version with two upgrades. I have one full version myself, strictly because I, I pirated that program and learned it way back in the, in the 90s and, and forward. So, yeah. you know, the thing is, is, is there, is there a, a justified piracy and so forth? To me, absolutely. And I think it applies much more to other things than games. But I don't know, you know, the idea out there that, you know, if, you've, if you're never going to buy it anyway, I don't really feel like that's a good justification because you did get enjoyment out of it, if you, especially if you continue to play it. Yeah. But, you know, on the topic like you were saying earlier, when you said, you know, you're sick and tired of dropping $60 on games that just are not worth your time. Didn't you say you had Brink, like, what, 48 hours? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 uh, I bought it day one, and then uh, you know I beat it because it was. I mean, there wasn't much to beat, and I took it back. I, I didn't take it back. I just went and sold it. I, you know, you can't. And that's one of the things. It's like you can't return, uh, you know, a game sure, that, that sure. you opened, and it's just like you know I was cheated. Oh, well, sorry, you opened it. Right, and of it, course. It just, God dang it. And you know, see, at that things. point, do, okay. Now let me ask you this. Let, let's say you had a. Uh, 
let's say you had a modded uh, Xbox laying over in the corner somewhere, and you said, you know what, I'm going to go download Brink and, and see what this is all about. And then if it's pretty good, then I'll go pick it up mm-hmm. and, and pay for it, you know, almost like a demo. Mm-hmm. I mean, you would not have bought that game had you probably been able to play some kind of version of it prior yeah. to buying it, right? Hell no. Hell no. No, I, I, and, and the thing is, I, I would have done it, too. I would never have bought it. Um, the thing is, is the, the way I feel is I know, I, I know that it's wrong, okay? But I also kind of feel cheated a lot of times in, 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 the, way, in the way I feel. I don't, I don't think that purchasing, I don't think that that entertainment is worth 60 damn dollars. Absolutely. I don't feel that way. I never feel that way. I don't. I don't think that. Um. You know, the only thing that I have ever been okay paying, I honestly pay for Netflix. You know why? Because I pay eight dollars a month for endless entertainment, and that is that it's an is excellent way. value. You can yes. see the worth. Absolutely. Exactly. There is no. I. I have no doubt. That is a must-have on my list of bills. Okay. It's like no, no, no. This is worth paying for. It's not one of those things. It's like you know, I'm paying for cable. I, I rarely watch it. No, no, no. This is always there if I want it. They're always adding new episodes. They're always doing. They're always updating. And I'm only paying like seven ninety nine a month. I mean, I'm not here to sound like an ad, but it's 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 awesome. But you know, now, but here's the deal. Now think about Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. It's Call of Duty mm-hmm. sixty dollars. Okay. The reason that this is the number one biggest selling franchise of all time. It's because sixty dollars gets you hundreds of hours of gameplay. Hundreds. Yeah. Now, yeah. obviously, not the campaign, but right. generally, anybody who buys a Call of Duty game is going to get more than their money's worth. There, there's right. no doubt about it. I don't care what you say. That's the reason that game sells. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, a game like Duke Nukem Forever. You're going to go out. You're going to play the campaign. I have no idea how long the campaign is. I'm guessing probably five to six hours. Exactly. And, you know, it's a novelty-style multiplayer. You know, it's not some kind of hardcore competitive style. You know, this is just going to be a novelty. You'll play it a few times with some friends, you know, and you'll probably be done with it. You know, you will probably not pick that up. Now, here's the thing. Let's say let's say you play five hours of multiplayer and five hours of campaign. You just paid $6 an hour to, to yep. you know, to own that game, you know, to play that game. And that's probably pushing it. You know, that's probably saying you're getting five hours of multiplayer out of it. Right. Call of Duty, exactly. you're down to literally pennies an hour. You know, you're, yep. you're probably, at, you know, literally, you know, less, less than a dollar an hour by far, most people. A lot of people probably are down to literal pennies per hour for the entertainment. Yeah, and exactly. you start comparing movies, you know, you go out to watch a movie these days, you're talking about a $10 movie ticket, you know, uh, for two hours, you know, so you're talking about five bucks an hour for entertainment there. Um, you know, you, 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 know, you start playing a game like L.A. Noir or Red Dead Redemption, uh, you know, Far Cry 2, these games... They're pretty darn good values. I see those games as sixty dollars, but yeah. people are tired of paying sixty dollars for uh, you know a five to to eight hour experience. Yep, it's just not worth and, it. Yeah, and 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 along the along the lines of of time. Now, I I, I want to bring this up because this is this is where my main piracy. Um, this is where the, the the majority of my piracy, uh, you know, history is, and that is that is with when you when you mention one system, one gaming system in the world, that this the, the piracy the the word piracy just comes with it, and that's the PlayStation Portable. Oh my God! Okay? Absolutely. Now the thing is, is that like most other suckers, I bought this thing, and I'm like, oh yay, <laughs> you know, it's 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 beautiful. I mean, the thing is marketed to look. As sexy as all other cons. I mean, it just looks so good. It's got an analog stick. It is a handheld console, and it was just the first of its kind. And we all bought it. And unfortunately, the PlayStation Portable is a very limited, a very very limited console. I mean, not just not just on the amount of games that it has, but the quality that they offer. Now, someone figured out how to hack this thing using uh, a Pandora battery, and <laughs> which is insane. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's the most insane way to hack anything I've ever heard a in my life. Battery, can you believe it? it? Yeah, and <laughs> so I was like, think it's worth the effort because I was I was honestly upset because you know my first outing was I bought uh, 
I bought Luminous and I bought oh, I can't even remember what else I bought. I think it was that Toda it started with a T. I can't even remember the name. But anyway, it was it was a crap game. Um and I was just like, wow, this is this is bad. And I and so what I do is I wait, I wait uh, some years, and I just wait for the good games to come out. And they do every now and then, but they're just not they're not worth the time, okay? And that's just that's the end of it. They're they're, they're just not worth the time. This comes out, and it's like, listen, there are no demos really. There are now, but there's there's not there's not a whole lot of demos out there for it. It's like you know, go ahead and 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 uh, and purchase this. And at this at this time, not purchase it, but but mod it. And at this time, I was about to sell the thing, you know. I was like, I'm going to get rid of it. And, you know, this came around, and I was like, you know what? Let me try this before I do it. Because, honestly, like, I had an extra PSP battery. And, uh, you know, th- those things at the time were, were about 50 bucks, but I found a really cheap one at a Radio Shack. And I was like, okay, well, let me let me try this out. So I did, and lo and behold, it worked, okay? So basically it made it so that any downloadable game from the Internet could be played on the PSP. And it kind of goes along the lines of what you were saying. You know, I was not going to purchase this game. I was going to sell the thing. And now I'm playing these games that I never did. Now, through this venture, I I started noticing something. And that's that I, I actually did take a, a risk that I wouldn't have taken normally. Okay? It, I, whereas normally I would have stood at the, the game store and I would have been eyeing four games and being like, okay, I'm going to try one of these. The other one I'm not going to try. Because like you, I had no money right. uh, for, to buy. Here I, ha- I said, screw it. Cue them up. All right? I got, four this, I got the four games I was eyeing. I got them downloading now. And I'm going to try them out. But like you said, I did. I realized I was actually gaining enjoyment out of this game. And I was like, I, I hope they make another one. A, a good example is the game Pat Upon. If you've never played oh, yeah. that, yeah, it's a very, very good RPG. It's very unique, and it's a rhythm-based game. I downloaded that game, and uh, I pirated it, and I absolutely loved it to the point that I actually went and purchased the real game. And this is how I handled it. Basically, if I enjoyed the game... I want to give back to the to, to the developer, and I did this. I know I know it may sound weird to a lot of you, and you guys are like you're an idiot, but I did the same thing with Dragon Age. If I buy a game used, and I, it's like turns out to just be one of my all time favorite games, I'm gonna take it back and I'm gonna buy it brand new. Um, the the thing about it, when I bought it at this used game store, they were actually selling it for the same price as a brand new copy. Um, and that's not why I did it, though. The reason I did it was just because, you know, I want there to be a Dark Souls. Luckily, there is, you know. Enough people bought it. But, you know, if, if people keep buying from these these used game stores and stuff like that, the, the sequel's not going to get made. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to piracy, of course, I, every now and then, if I can't get something on Netflix, I'll be like, oh, well, let's see if somebody, <laughs> let's see if somebody filmed it, you know. Um, <laughs> and you know what? That doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean that it should be right. It doesn't mean it is right. People smoke pot. Okay, it's illegal, but people do it. You know it's wrong, but you still do it. Uh, th- this is the same thing. It doesn't make it right because everybody's doing it. Right. Uh, it's still a wrong thing to do, and it's still literally it- it's cheating some of the people. However, in some of these cases, I feel cheated. I personally feel cheated, and this is unfortunately for them. It's one way for us to get back at, at this cheat, you know? Well, you, it's you, true. I mean, where's the, you know, where's the justice for, you know, for the consumer whenever we buy garbage? You know, now, if you go in, if you go down the store and you buy, uh, you know, a new lawnmower and you get home and you, you know, you use it for a, a weekend and you go, Jesus, this thing is terrible. You know, the wheel fell off and the handle's loose and the, yeah. you know, the thing kept dying on me. And I mean, this is, this is terrible. You have the right as a consumer to bring it back and get your money back or exchange mm-hmm. it for something else. Exactly. Now, what happens when you buy a horrible game? You know, or, or you you buy an application that was oversold with features that you know that weren't really there. You or know, half ass or yeah. half ass. You know, or whatever. You know, where okay at that point the rules change because now it's software, and they can only assume that if you bought the software and you went home and opened it and then installed it, now you're going to bring it back. Because now you just you just want your money back and you're going to keep it installed and you made a exactly. copy of the disc or something. So in the world of software, you don't have a legitimate gripe or a le- legitimate claim of dissatisfaction. Whatever yeah, the- you get is what you get, and and there's no justice for the consumer at that point. 
Right, and your only option is to go sell it for a fraction of what you paid for it. Absolutely, because and, it, you know anybody who's going to buy used software is probably going to be a pirate, mostly. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, you're right. It, it completely changes the, the way it works just for the simple fact of how easy it would be to get away with being dishonest upon returning the software. Now, I don't understand. I, I honestly cannot tell you why they don't why they don't put a, a 15 maybe maybe a, a maybe a 15 to 20 hour return policy on a video game like like you know a PlayStation 3 game honestly I, I just don't get it because well, I mean but think about it though with a game only being five or six hours they could put a they could put yeah. a 10 hour you know time to you know if you're gonna go down and buy it you could literally come home play the whole game and be we be, you know be like wow that was awesome I'll go get my money back well yeah you know? <laughs> but but you know games GameSpot or GameStop even these mom and pop stores they don't they don't falter from it and they do the same. Th- I mean, I don't know about where you guys live, but where I live, I get a 24-hour trial period. Really? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, I've got. I mean, I've got the printed paper on my GameStop form that says 24-hour trial. You know, and some places don't mention it, but it's actually in their policy to offer it. And I just don't understand why Walmart and them can't do the same thing. It just makes no sense to me. I always get a 24-hour trial. If I take it back and I say this was a, a, a uh, just a, an absolute insult. Uh, to my console, like I felt dirty putting it in. They're like, "Oh, okay. Well, we'll just pick something else out. You know, of the same value. Go ahead." You're telling me that GameStop, GameStop. Uh, no, no, no. Know. They okay. No, they don't do it for new games. No, but they do it for used games. Oh, used games. Yeah. Okay. Not new. I got but but I mean, it doesn't matter if it's new or used. That policy still applies. I mean, I could take I could take Modern Warfare, buy it used, and bring it back that day after beating it and say, "No, I didn't like it." I could continue doing this. You know, you just have to limit it. You know, you can you can limit it to one thing. I mean, like if a brand new game is coming out, it's like you know you can only do it one time. It's like right. You can't, you can't keep bringing a game back. You know, it's like you know. If you pick one, you should make a good decision. Be, That's don't called be an Gamefly. <laughs> <laughs> Gamefly, exactly, exactly. No, I, I, but you know, there, there's, there's a lot of gray area there where I think, I think that people or, or, or game industry really sets them up, sets themselves up to be pirated. There's ways that they could do things better, uh, especially when it comes to the pricing. I mean, man, sixty dollars a game. We well, you know it's here, almost. Well, here's what's crazy. This is what I don't understand. You know, this is we're in now in the age of like major digital distribution. Now, think about you know think about the you know for for a lot of you I know a lot of a lot of you that listen to this podcast you know the, they're you know you're nowhere near my age probably a lot of you aren't even Viridia's age but you yeah. know the thing is is here's the way things used to work there used to be a very very common phrase which almost doesn't even exist anymore and that phrase is shareware. The point of shareware, and and every game had shareware. This was a limited, very limited demo. And Mm -hmm. the demo was able to allow you, at that moment, on on the discs that, that you could get the demo on, the reason it was called shareware is you were supposed to check it out, you were supposed to play the limited version of the game, you know, whatever the demo was, basically. And if you, you liked it or didn't, it didn't matter. You were supposed to give it away to somebody else, share it with somebody else. That was the whole point. Because if you, if you like the demo, you were going to go buy the full game. What did you need the demo for, you know? Yeah. And this is the way that, you know, games like Doom uh, and, and Descent and, um, you know, the, these, you know, the old Wolfenstein, you know, all these games, you know, these huge big name games. The reason that these names are so recognizable by people who haven't even played them is because these games were huge, and it's because the demo was available. People right. could check it out. The, the demo was full-featured but very limited content. This could be done so easily now, and for whatever reason, I just don't understand it. You know, the demos aren't available. Most of the time now, a demo is only available after the game has been released. <laughs> yeah, they, no, that's true. They, they'll they release it later. It's just like, now you can play Black Ops demo. I, they haven't even released the Black Ops demo, but I remember from Modern Warfare 3, you didn't get that demo forever, you know? People people knew it was going to be okay, but it's just like, for whatever reason, it was kind of a joke. It's like, ah, oh, there's a missing link there. We don't have Modern Warfare in the M's. I will go ahead and put it in there, all right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's, it's past the point of, uh, you know, of being... You know, I, it's not new anymore, but you know that that's true. And, and even if there is a demo, um, 
nowadays these things are souped up to to you know be oh wow this 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 could be cool you know I mean if 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 you had given me a demo of Brink and I'm, I've been thinking trying to think about this and you'd given me one of the one of the missions or something. I don't know. I might have been like, "Wow, this is this might be something I want to play." It's not through realizing that every single mission's the same, right? You know, and and really realizing that the AI is stupid, which could be easily modified in a demo. That you know, I it's just it, yeah. You it, know, it, the, it, the last major demo that I remember that made such an impact on the gaming community was so long ago. That was Half Life Day One. They actually named the the episode that they gave you for free, and really? let me tell you that that demo was so unbelievable. The demo was probably close to an hour long, if I remember. Okay, mm-hmm. and and it had so much content, and it was so good, and it ended on such a high note. It was kind of like a. It was kind of like when you're watching your favorite TV series, and they have that major cliffhanger at the end, and you just go, "Oh man, I can't yeah. wait till season two. That's exactly what they did. They released this phenomenal demo. It had a lot of content. It, they drew you into the world. They they made all these 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 fantastic you know mentions of things to come. And then like right when you're like hardcore and things are going crazy and these soldiers come in and they're throwing grenades at you and you're going crazy and then all of a sudden you like get onto a helicopter and it's like yeah demo's over and you're like oh my god yeah. you know, I want to I want to keep playing right now <laughs> that was a great demo that was that sold mm-hmm. the game and let me tell you that's why Half Life became one of the best selling games because people were like oh my god I've got to buy that game you know yeah exactly and and of course they released the demo Shoot, it was probably a couple of months before the game was released because they wanted to build up the hype. This is perfect marketing, something that Valve is known for. Now, you know, you take a game like, um, oh gosh, what was a game that was really rough around the edges besides Brink? Uh, What was a real flop this year? Ah, crap. There's been so many. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> There's just so many flops. I just can't remember them all. This has been a bad year. God, I just can't think of a, a, a you know. Well, I honestly okay. can't think of any that I played a demo for either. Well, you know, and and that's the thing. Let's say, uh, you know, I can't. You know what? I know a, a good demo that popped out this year. One of the only demos I can think of was the Bulletstorm demo. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. A lot of people downloaded that demo, and you know, it, some people were turned off by it. Other people thought it was pretty good. I bought the game based oh, on yeah, the demo. Oh, yeah, so did I. Uh, and I like the game. Now, I haven't been able to, to really devote a lot of time to it, but I really enjoyed the demo, and the demo was short enough to whet my appetite for that game style, but you know, long enough for me to get a feel for the game. It sold me the game. Now, let me tell you, had I never played that demo, that game would have never been on my radar. I never yeah. would have thought about it. Yeah, I never even heard of it till the demo, honestly. So, you know, the point is nowadays, what the way I the way I see piracy, okay, is that let me tell you, generally, if you are gonna pirate games and there's plenty of you doing it, you know, and there's a lot of people who go out there going, No, I don't you know, it's like yeah. Yeah, shut right. Up. <laughs> no, yeah, you do. there's plenty of people out there doing it, okay? But the bottom line is is I don't see uh, you know, I don't see a, a, a black and white here. I see a lot of gray area because let me tell you I overlook piracy for people who either, A, can't afford games, they wouldn't be able to devote their money to it in the first place. And I mean, really. Don't just, you know, oh, I, I only make $100,000 a year, and I, you know, I got to buy that Lamborghini next year. I can't <laughs> yeah, really exactly. afford to buy L.A. Noir, so I'm going to pirate it. You know, no, 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 okay? I mean, really. If you're, I mean, if you're really struggling, and, you know, and you still have a gaming habit, and you're just like, oh, man, I, you know, I want to, you know, it's like, I understand that I was there I've been there but you know what when you start making money damn it go mm-hmm. buy some games you know in yeah, fact, get- I've gone back and bought games you know I bought yeah. games on Steam that were older games that I never had a chance to buy because they were just out of date or whatever and I've I bought them because I just wanted to own it exactly yeah I've done the same thing before I mean you know I I, I always that's the thing we we have a habit of gaming we have a, a you know a, a hobby of it and you can't sit here and enjoy the content in the at the end of the day you can't sit here and enjoy the content and not put a cent into it if Absolutely. you if you pirate you you're already taking away something from the industry however 
I, you know, I personally think giving back, which I do, I, I, I do more giving to the game industry than I ever have taking away. Believe me, there were no, I'm there with were, you. <laughs> there were no, there were no copies of Loco Roco that were hurt in the make in the, you know, the, the, the downloading of the torrents that I, you know, that I did. <laughs> no, no Loco Roco copy went unsold. I guarantee you uh, that wouldn't have been sold in the first place because I sure as hell wouldn't have bought it. But <laughs> I played it, you know, and, the, and and so what I'm saying is that you know, give back. If you do at least a bit, because you are like Anakin said earlier, you are you are enjoying, uh, you know, the game. You're enjoying it, and the, the more people do this, the the harder it's going to be for these companies. And to tell you the truth, the more inconvenient it's going to be for us to even acquire this stuff. You know, it's going to be we're going to have 50 codes in our game. We're going to open it up. That that freaking case is going to be like, oh god. Pfft. Set it down. You're like, oh, that was a, that was heavy. You know, it's like, oh, what, what's in it? You open it up. There's like 50 codes. You got to put in a code for each loading screen to even play the game. You know, <laughs> think about that before you buy your game again. But I mean, yeah, if you, I mean, literally, if it's like, you know, I am never going to purchase this game ever. Who knows? Maybe it'll be like. Oh my god! I actually enjoy that game so much that I am going to go purchase the game. You know, it's something like that. If there is a demo, download the demo first, and and if you just don't have the the cash, you just make your own decision. Use Peer Guardian. You know, it's like yeah, that's all I got to tell you. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, the thing is, is if a game company the way I the way I see it, if a game company is not going to allow a demo to come out, especially for a, a sixty dollar title. Right. If that company is not smart enough or responsible enough to try out the game on an audience, then you know what? Odds are it's probably not worth your money. And here's the thing. This applies to movies, music, and, and various other things. You know, Let me tell you, the general rule in movies, because I'm a huge movie buff. At some point, we'll have to, we'll have to do you know, down the movie scope or something. There you go. <laughs> but, hey, but, I'll, be, I'll be up for it. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I'm a huge movie buff. And the general rule is with movies, if they don't allow critics to screen the movie before the launch day, the release day, it, it's almost always considered to be bad. And the producer knows it, the director knows it, the, the distribution company knows it, everybody knows it. And that's why they don't want critics to see it because early critic screenings can destroy a movie's launch weekend. Well, hell yeah. I mean, how many times do you, uh, I mean, how many times do you check IGN before you know a game's coming out to st- or, or IGN or, or Metacritic rather to see if these people have, have, have pre-screened the movie or the game, I mean. Absolutely. I mean, I do it all the time. I'm sitting there going, okay, okay, let's see. Uh, we're, we're, we're like 15 hours away from release. Do we have anything to tell me, you know, how this game might feel? I never take a collective stance or I, I never take a singular stance. I always take the collective yep. and I say, okay, well, everybody's saying this is a problem. Everybody's liking this. Everybody's liking this. And I can put, I can piece together without even playing a game because I've done it for so long. I can piece together the feel of the game. Yeah, and, absolutely. And so, you know, there's all kinds of ways they could fix it. I mean, of course, not everybody's going to do it. There's a lot, a lot of people who just are like, you know, they're like throwing their trash in the ground and saying, well, somebody else will pick it up or either that or, uh, you know, it's just one piece of trash. And they just keep saying that over and over and over. Well, it's got to start somewhere. Somebody's got to got to throw the trash on the ground. Somebody's got to always download and, and, and take away. So, I mean, you're, you're always causing a problem. You're part of the collective audience that's doing it and you're not contributing back. Um, but I just see this as getting really out of hand and and really really screwing things up for us in the future if if it gets out of you know too out of hand. Absolutely, yeah, and that's the thing is you know I, I have to you know I have to say because I mean I I actually feel like I've kind of uh, you know attributed back so much to the entire media industry and I, I mean even more than games. I mean you know yeah. I I had my fair share of some MP3s I downloaded. I downloaded a few movies. I've downloaded games. I've done all this in my and certainly in my twenties, especially when the internet was kind of wide open and there was just so much free reign to do whatever you want. I mean, it was like everybody was doing it. You didn't even know it was wrong back then, you know, because it was right. just, just so wide open. And, um, you know, at now I own, you know, an unbelievable number of, of uh, you know, I, I, I have over 2,000 CDs. I have right. over five or 600 uh, DVDs. I, I own more Blu-rays than almost anybody else I know in my own in my own personal life, you know. And I adopted. I actually adopted the HD DVDs, uh, 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 HD DVD format. And then, of course, I had to, to you know I got burned by that, you know. But my money was out there. 
I bought a lot of movies of HD DVD at the time. Exactly. Uh, I, I bought Blu-rays. I have all three consoles. You know, and, and everybody even made fun of me for buying things like the Kinect and stuff. You know, everybody jacked with me about that. But you know what? I, like I've mentioned before, I like innovation. I've gotten away with a lot of stuff in the past. You know, I've gotten away with some, some content here and there that, you know, I could cheat and get by on. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Now, I have, I have, you know, let me tell you, I probably sent Bobby Kodak's kids to college, you know, <laughs> and I have, uh, I have, you know, I've spent so much money on games. I've got games that I haven't even opened. Literally, no lie. I've got a game or two, actually, on my shelf I have not even opened yet. Oh, my gosh. And that's because, you know, obviously I haven't had a lot of time. But at the same time, you know, it's like... It's just just crazy. You know, same thing for downloadable content for Rock Band. Mm -hmm. I have... I have no lie in my personal rock band collection. I have 1,100 songs. Now think about that. Two dollars a song, two bucks a song. Okay, yes, 1,100 songs on my PS3 that I've downloaded for Rock Band. It's two dollars a song. Yes. (laughs) Are you kidding? That that alone is just. I've I've paid my dues. Damn it. Yeah, I would have. I, I would. I wouldn't have done that. I mean, I. <laughs> that's just me. Though. I mean, you, it's your. You're pretty passionate about those. those I games. love Rock Band, though. I mean, let me tell you, I'm not. A, I'm not. You know, I'm not always on rhythm games in general, but Rock Band, I just have a soft spot for. So. Let me ask you this: uh, since we're winding down, um, we're, I think we're we we're getting pretty close to the yeah, end here. Let me yeah. ask you this: uh, what, Have you ever been caught? No, never have. I know people never who have. Caught. I actually I, know people who have. Yeah, I know you do. You know, <laughs> I got. I've been caught. Really? Uh, yeah, I. Uh, I. I went in. Uh, this is where I learned the importance of. Of. Uh, you know, secrecy. Oh <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, I was. I was downloading a PlayStation game, and I. You know, I'm like da da. You know, I go to. I set it to download. I go to bed. I'm just. I wake up. I'm like, sweet, got a new game. You know, and I, I get in there, and my internet's off, and I'm like, huh. So I go. I. I open Firefox. It won't open. So I go to. Uh, IE and it's like it literally has a message on my browser that says we have shut down your internet due to the following files that have been you know uh, uh, sensed to be on your in your IP address or whatever you know and it starts naming the files I download and I was like uh oh <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh wow crap and they're like but here's a, the the message literally said just go ahead and do this and this to get your internet back on or call us and i called them because it wouldn't work and they're like okay go ahead and, and do me a favor right quick i was like all right and i'm i'm standing at my wires and he's like go ahead and delete that file and i was like <laughs> i was like really man this is going to work for you like oh my it's God. really you're really going to tell me to delete the file i'm like you know i'm just standing here at the cords right and i'm going to say okay <laughs> It's like good all right, lord. It's gone. It's gone. I've deleted it. <laughs> He's like, all right, good. Now go ahead and, and unplug your modem. You know, it's like. <laughs> so yeah, I, I have been caught. Uh, it, it's again, it's one of those things where it's like it seems like a pain in the butt to them. It's just like we're gonna shut your internet off and like you just gotta call us and get it back on. Like this protocol, you know. Uh, it, I mean, there's not even. I, I've seen some lawsuits, of course, for hardcore sure. policies. We've seen people like, like I think uh, U Bull, the the clown shoes that he is, oh, yeah. actually tried to sue that girl last year. Yep. Uh, no, but he, they go in and he's like, "You tried to download Blood Rain, you or whatever accent he's. I don't even know what, he, what accent he's got. <laughs> tried to download Blood Rain, I and he's like, <laughs> it's like. Uh, they're like seventy year old people, and they're like, we never did it. It's like you know what, some little kid. Driving by his parents' car, used their freaking internet that was unprotected, you know. So now, if I ever got a call again like that, I'd be like, "Yeah, man, my my internet's unprotected. I I, I can't figure out how to get my stuff working." It's like, "Oh, yeah, it wasn't me, man. Just yeah, can you guys send like a tech out to help me with it, and then just unprotect it?" You know, it's like, <laughs> "Yeah, it's, exactly. it's so easy to get away with it. It's it's not even funny." So anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there while we were closing up the the cast. Yeah, but, I was uh, I was lucky enough to get by. I mean, I haven't done it in God. I probably haven't. Uh, yeah, Jesus, this is it's been years and years now. But you know, again, I'm financially able to to spend money here and there on games. I I still can't buy games like some people. I don't know how some of these guys out there, especially even some of the YouTubers. They're, yeah, they're, Jesus, they're buying like every literally every new release, and I'm like, huh, you. What do you, where do you, where do you work? You know, how do I get yeah, that job? Exactly. But, uh, no, I, yeah, I agree. I, I feel the same way. Um, I mean, I just feel fortunate to be able to buy, you know, a lot of the peripherals that I have. Uh, you know, I've got every console. I've got 
got a lot of peripherals for every console. You know, I have a fairly nice PC with a, a good gaming rig. You know, I mean, I, I feel like I have certainly uh, contributed to the to the gaming world more than my fair share. I, I guarantee you I've got a, lar- a much larger investment in gaming. And, and probably cumulative, I bet you I've spent more money on, on my habit of gaming uh, I, I bet you then probably the next 10 gamers in line, you know, I, I'm telling you, I've spent a fortune over the last few years and probably the last time I've downloaded anything, I bet you it's probably been 2003, you know, oh, wow. um, it's wow. been a long time, but you know, I mean, even back then, I mean, st- I was still kind of, you know, tinkering with that, you know, here and there, trying things out and, and, um, you know, but it was almost all PC at the time. And, you know, again, it was just so prevalent. You couldn't hardly escape it. And yeah. believe it or not, I still go back, and there were certain games I tried out that later on, you know, created an entire franchise. I ended up buying the later, the later sequels. You yeah. know, so once again, this goes back to, you know, if they release demos, then a lot of that piracy will go away because people won't be so... Uh, they, first of all, it's curiosity that drives most piracy. I, I guarantee mm-hmm. you, curiosity of what it's like to check out the game, and the demo will satisfy a lot of that. I'm not saying all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden demos come out and nobody's going to pirate games anymore, but you know, I guarantee you a lot of people pirate because they want to try it out. And many times, if they try it out and they don't have the multiplayer, especially if it's single player, wh- why are you going to go buy it at that point? If it works and you got mm-hmm. it to work and everything's great, you're probably not going to go buy it if you've downloaded it. But yeah. for multiplayer, you're going to go. You're, you're going to have to buy it these days for any kind of multiplayer. So, but anyway, regardless, you know the thing. The thing is, is I think that the gaming industry has a lot to learn on how to to beat piracy, other than like throwing lawsuit papers at everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, they they really do need to evaluate the quality of the product for the price. You know, sixty dollars is a good price for a good quality game. That's yeah. not the general rule. We get. The reason that, that there are AAA titles out there, that, and people call them AAA titles, is because they, there's been so much quality put into it, it's worth $60. Price your game accordingly. You know, if the game is, is just a weak game, I'll still buy it if it's 20 or 30 bucks. I'm not paying $60 for it. No. no. So, and demos, you know, demos will help. <laughs> so anyway, there's, there's my take on piracy, you know, and I mean, yeah. I've, I've tried it. I don't do it anymore because, you know, I mean, I, I've got a family to, <laughs> to think about. Yeah. I certainly don't want to, you know, be in jail yeah. over it. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I can understand why it happens and I can understand too. people people wanting to do it. Me too. And and I like to say, I mean, I, like, the last thing I want to say about the matter and I don't, you know, I Anakin and I obviously don't have any problem giving ourselves away on the on, the, on how we did it <laughs> and what we've done. It's not a big deal, but others do others don't, but I do want to assure you something. If it weren't per, for piracy, you sure as hell wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Um, you wouldn't be seeing half the people on YouTube that you enjoy. I guarantee you that. Yep. I know I know the majority of people, the only way that they would ever be able to bring the entertainment that you receive is with piracy. Yep. I know that. So keep that in mind if you're on the fence and, and you know you're one of those people that's just like, you know, there's absolutely no good in it. That's that's I that can't that's not true, honestly. I mean, uh <laughs> I don't know how many I doubt many of you are that way. Uh, but uh but to those of you who are, then this is definitely it's definitely not a horrible thing. I mean, yeah. I, I guarantee you Sony's not losing sleep over a few commentators being able to put out a nice high definition video. Well, we're advertising for them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We're always talking about it. You know, it's just, it's one of those things. I think there's only I only know one scrub scrub director, no, I'm just kidding, that uh, that actually <laughs> purchased the some 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 Sony Vegas software and uh we won't talk about uh, his zombie loving ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> fantastic. But anyway, anyway, uh, I hope I hope you guys I hope that answered your questions. I I know we had a lot of questions on that. And if you do have comments and and concerns about what we talked about, a very controversial issue, then go ahead and put it in the comments. Tell us how we're going, or send us an email at, at podcast down the scope at gmail.com and we'll we'll definitely look at those. We we do look at every every email that comes in. I guarantee you. Some of them a lot of them are 
talking about the same thing, so we kind of narrow them down like we did tonight Absolutely. and talk about it in, in one uh, in one segment. Do we have any user mail? Yeah, I, I did want to mention uh, Wham sixty nine. Um, you know, he uh, he put in a a very interesting mail. Uh, talking about piracy, you know, we 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 kind of asked everybody a couple episodes ago to send in all of your your piracy topic comments, uh, mm-hmm. and we would kind of address some of them. And we we did you know talk about quite a bit, but uh, apparently I'm just gonna I'm just gonna summarize what he's written to us here. He uh, lives in Venezuela. And apparently, you know, again, you know, this this is rampant across the world. Okay, in the United States and and a lot more uh, of you know it, it, the bigger countries out there, you know, Britain and a lot of Europe, piracy, you know, is very frowned upon. But in these other countries, uh, and apparently Venezuela here is a prime example. He tells us about where he lives and what piracy is like. He he, summar- you know, I'm going to summarize what he says here. That basically. Piracy is wide open out there. They don't even mm-hmm. police it. He can walk down to a quote unquote store and either buy a real copy or the pirated copy, you know, cheaper. And yep. and that's just because they, you know, that's a lot of times the only way they can get it. They don't even yep. have a lot of these games, dis- you know, distributed to their countries either due to censorship <clears throat> or due to just lack of distribution, you know, because of sales. So, um, you know, in other countries, we know that I, I know that this goes on blatantly in, in a lot of uh, South American countries. Certainly, Mexico is. Uh, I, I keep hearing from Brazil a lot of times in my in my uh, inbox. I get a lot of guys from Germany, uh, some other places, and they talk about piracy. It's just wide open. And uh, I want to thank Wham69 uh, yeah. for, for his email. And then there was another very interesting uh, – uh, we had um, – I don't know if he wants us to say his real name here. He says, my name is pronounced Skeesis. Uh, so, Skeesis, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, he actually wrote me, you know, my name is pronounced Skeesis here. Uh, but anyway, he also sent in an article about game piracy, and it was a very interesting uh, <laughs> blog post uh, about it. And one of the uh, – th- there was quite a bit of information there. And one of the things, by the way, was – uh, they they blocked uh, they 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 had a game you know they had all these games pirated or whatever they blocked all these these pirated sites or whatever and forced people to buy a specific game or whatever and after blocking it I, I don't know how the article was was you know I don't know how they're uh, uh, let, let me see here it says um, they said yeah this is this was really strange they said here. Um, they did a survey that only 4% of PC gamers in the United States admit to pirating, pirating games. Um, but they did, a, uh, they did some kind of crazy uh, test, right. and it was only 1% of pirates actually bought the real game when not, when not faced with the, the uh, issue of actually being able to pirate it. Um, mm. Yeah, here we are. It says here, uh, anecdotally and from studies by companies like the BSA, it's clear that pirates, for the most part, have very little income. They are generally unemployed students, or they live in countries with very low per capita GDP, where the price of a $60 game is more like $1,000. When, oh. And it says, when reflexive games performed a series of experiments with anti-piracy measures, they found that they only made one extra sale for every 1,000 pirated copies they blocked. This implies that their 90% piracy statistic caused them to lose less than 1% of their sales. So this this is what I was saying, is that a lot of people who pirate games generally will not be able to buy it to begin with. And and by the way, this is a great article. In fact, I may (laughs) include the link to this article uh, in the um, the, uh, description of the uh, down the scope for this week because it is such a controversial topic. And I right. want to thank uh, Skeesis for that. His first name is Bobby, in case I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, so thanks again for that uh, for sharing that. I, I think it was a very, very informative article. So yeah. um, other than that, Verdi, you got anything else left? And we'll wrap this up. No, I do want to make a mention. We had uh, we had a, an email sent in about uh, about some of the stuff we did miss from the podcast, uh, guys. We couldn't talk about every game. We still can't. There's a there were hundreds of games talked about, uh, but one of them in particular was was my favorite game at 
pretty much this year coming out, and that was Skyrim. Uh, we, I will be talking about that in the future. So if you're wanting me to talk about Skyrim, I definitely will be discussing it and going over it because, it, I mean, you guys got to realize it does come out in November. So uh, before that gets here, there's going to be a lot of mention, so don't worry about that. And other than that, I am good to go. I think, uh, you know, uh, guys, we appreciate you watching. And also, um, don't forget to email us your questions at podcastdownthescope at gmail.com. And uh, we'll we'll get those on the onto the air. So sounds good. All right. Sounds well, good. this has been episode twenty one of Down the Scope, the gaming podcast you can't miss. I am Anakin, and that's been Viridia. We will see you guys with episode twenty two. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Later. Later.